Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a congratulatory cable to the President of the United Arab Emirates, Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, on the occasion of his country's success in launching Khalifa Sat satellite as the first Emirati made satellite. His Majesty hailed the achievement that represents a quantum leap in UAE's approach to manufacture and launch satellites. His Majesty the King also commended UAE's strategy of adopting the expertise of the people of his country. He expressed pleasure in naming the satellite after Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan. His Majesty the King also sent a congratulatory cable to the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan on the occasion. His Majesty expressed pride in the achievement, hailing the high global status of the UAE. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of the United Arab Emirates, Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan, accompanied by the UAE Minister of Culture and Knowledge Development, Noura bint Muhammad Al Kaabi, upon their visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain to participate in the 8th Joint Supreme Committee meeting between Bahrain and the UAE. His Majesty the King affirmed the depth of historic and brotherly ties between Bahrain and the UAE, which are are based on strong foundations of close cooperation and coordination in all fields. He conveyed the greetings of UAE President His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the UAE uh, Vice President and Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, to His Majesty the King, and their wishes of progress and prosperity to the Kingdom and its people. His his Majesty welcomed the Minister and the delegation and asked him to convey his greetings to the UAE President, Vice President and Abu Dhabi's Crown Prince and his wishes of progress and prosperity to the Emirati people. His Majesty the King hailed the results of the Joint Committee meeting, which included signing a number of agreements, memorandums of understanding and executive programs that aim to support cooperation and integration in the political, economic, financial, cultural, educational and tourism fields. His Majesty noted the efforts of the members of the committee in implementing the strategic visions of the two countries' leadership through strengthening joint coordination. His Majesty also commended the efforts of officials in both countries to achieve all that of benefit to the two brotherly people. His Majesty praised the continuous support of the UAE and its honorable stances towards the kingdom and its people, hailing the country's high international status and its achievements and successes in various fields, in light of its commitment to support Arab and Islamic issues and establish security and stability in the region. His Majesty the King congratulated the UAE on its success in launching Khalifa Saad satellite, which is a quantum leap for the country to manufacture and launch satellites by relying on local expertise, wishing everyone progress and success. For his part, the Minister hailed the efforts of His Majesty in consolidating the deep-rooted brotherly ties between Bahrain and the UAE, affirming that these relations received the support of both countries' leadership. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to discuss the formation of the Civil Service Council and implementation of the Royal Order 50 of 2018. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister expressed appreciation for the efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to increase government achievements and support the comprehensive development march of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. For his part, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince expressed pride in the Royal Trust of appointing him as the President of the Civil Service Council, expressing thanks and appreciation for the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to all government authorities to take supporting measures to implement the Fiscal Balance Program. He affirmed that the continuous follow-up of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to establish the foundations of government work will be a marker for achievement and effective addressing of challenges. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince hailed the visions of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, which will support the goals of the Civil Service Council, expressing aspiration to achieve the requirements of the Civil Service Council's work and establish institutionalized systems that contribute to improving the government authority's competency.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Rifa Palace the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan and Minister of Culture and Knowledge Development Noura bin Muhammad Al Kaabi from the United Arab Emirates on the occasion of their visit to the kingdom to participate in the 8th session of the Higher Committee meeting between the two countries. Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed conveyed the greetings of the President of the UAE His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan Vice President President and Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, and their wishes of further progress and prosperity for Bahrain. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister praised the firm stance of the UAE towards Bahrain and hailed the bilateral brotherly relations. He said that the stances of the UAE is based on the historical legacy of Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan, which reflected greatly on the relations between between the two countries. His Royal Highness congratulated the UAE on launching the Khalifa satellite and described it as an international achievement. He added that the UAE is a model that should be followed through its achievements in various fields and added that these achievements benefit all GCC and Arab countries and guide them towards a better future. The meeting included discussions regarding the bilateral relations and ways to further enhance them and strengthen the cooperation. His Royal Highness affirmed the Kingdom's keenness to further strengthen relations with the UAE and express thanks and appreciation to the firm stances of the UAE and their support to Bahrain. He affirmed the importance of this meeting to enhance the cooperation between the two countries that achieves common interests. His Royal Highness requested the Foreign Minister of the UAE to convey his greetings to the leadership of the UAE, wishing them abundant health and happiness. Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan praised the bilateral brotherly relations and hailed the role of the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to further develop these relations. He affirmed the UAE's keenness to always support the Kingdom and hailed the achievements and developments of the Kingdom and its ability to face all challenges. He stressed the importance of increasing the number of visits between the officials of both countries as well as the GCC countries to enhance the bilateral coordination.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today received the United Arab Emirates Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan at Qudaybiyah Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the historic partnership between the two nations underpinned by the commitment of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the President of the United Arab Emirates, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan to further advance cooperation at all levels. His Royal Highness extended his thanks to the UAE for continuously supporting the Kingdom of Bahrain across various sectors. He also extended his appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Abdullah for participating at the 8th meeting of the Joint High Committee between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates. His Royal Highness went on to underscore the UAE's continuous support to the Saudi-led coalition that aims to restore security and stability in Yemen, affirming Bahrain's commitment to continue advancing regional collaboration to safeguard stability. He concluded by extending Bahrain's congratulations to the government and the people of the UAE for the successful launch of the first Emirati-made satellite Khali Fassad. His Highness Sheikh Abdullah expressed his appreciation for the level of cooperation and coordination between the two countries. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmad bin Muhammad Al Khalifa, and the United Arab Emirates Minister of Culture and Knowledge and Development, Noura bin Muhammad Al Kaabi, also attended the meeting. Following the announcement of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, during the Government Forum 2018 regarding the launching of building permit system Binayat, the Minister of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning, Hassam Khalaf, praised the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to develop the Binayat system, which is considered a quantum leap in the speed of issuance of building permits in less than five days within a unified directory of building permits required. The minister said the system is one of the initiatives of His Royal Highness that follows the Bahrain Economic Vision 2030 to make the private sector a main partner in improving the kingdom's economy. He added that the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince comes to push the development operations forward in order to enhance the real estate and investment movements to strengthen the kingdom's economy. The minister pointed out that the system's acceleration of the work rate compared to the current system and comes with the improvement and development of the rest of the procedures related to the system such as scrutiny, inspection and control. He said that the system has great potential to monitor, manage and evaluate the service of building permits from start to finish in a way that promotes the kingdom's competitiveness regionally and globally in the field of urban development. He also said that the system allows the private sector to compete in providing the best services and that Binayat was designed on a methodology based based on the allocation of a large part of the services provided by the government in building permits to the private sector. The minister said that the system will improve the permit system and in this context, ministerial decrees have been issued to the engineering offices to carry out the functions of the government work with all the legal responsibilities to amend, assemble and develop the technical structure. He pointed out that the amendment of the procedural structures of permits has been the re-engineering of multiple complex procedures in all entities related to issuing permits and collected in a brief and unified procedure that that brings the entire government sector under a basic procedure. The minister stressed the need to achieving the goals of the project through reducing the time for issuance of permits and facilitating the process of submission of government services and unification of the requirements relating to building permits and transferring the role of government agencies from operational to regulatory and development of an effective mechanism to monitor performance in order to contribute to the development of the investment environment of the country and achieve the objectives of the economic vision of the kingdom of Bahrain. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met with the United Arab Emirates Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan. During the meeting, the Minister of Foreign Affairs welcomed Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed, stressing the deep rooted brotherly relations between Bahrain and the UAE. For his part, Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed stressed the strength of relations between the two countries and the two brotherly peoples, expressing pride and appreciation for the prosperous, distinguished brotherly relations between the two countries at all levels. The Joint High Committee between Bahrain and the UAE convened under the chairmanship of the two ministers in the presence of the President of Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Hamai Mohammed Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Culture and Knowledge Development of the UAE, Noura bint Mohammed Al Kabi. Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed affirmed in his speech that communication and cooperation between Bahrain and the UAE is the embodiment and continuation of the approach adopted by the founding fathers who established it and used it for their own will and strong determination to consolidate the solid foundations of these close brotherly relations. These relations have become a model for cohesion and unity among brothers as a result of the generous care and constant attention of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the UAE President Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, he said. The Minister of Foreign Affairs stated that the meeting of the Joint High Committee is merely a reflection of the long historical journey of brotherly relations between the two countries on so many levels. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also hailed the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding between Sheikh Ibrahim bin Mohammed Al Khalifa Center for Culture and Research and the UAE Ministry of Culture and Knowledge Development to celebrate the uh, to celebrate the culture of Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan and Muharraq city as the capital of Islamic culture. For his part, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of the UAE expressed gratitude and appreciation for his counterpart, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmad bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and all members of the Bahraini side for their hospitality and organization of the Joint High Committee's work. He also added that the High Joint Committee embodies the historical relations between the two countries. Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed stressed that the two countries are bound by a common destiny. He also noted that the UAE follows economic policies of the kingdom, commending the wise policy of His Majesty the King. He also called on the private sector to promote joint action that develops the direct investment between the two countries, noting the participation of the kingdom at Expo 2020. Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed invited the Minister of Foreign Affairs and members of the committee to visit the UAE to hold the next session of the committee next year. The following statement was issued after the meeting. According to the directives of His Majesty the King and the President of the United Arab Emirates, to strengthen cooperation and coordination between the two countries in all fields and based on the historical fraternal ties and the close relations between the two peoples and the invitation of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Bahrain, the UAE Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation visited Bahrain on the 29th and 30th of October 2018. The 8th meetings of the Joint High Committee were held yesterday and today under the chairmanship of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Bahrain and the UAE Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation with the participation of several officials from the two countries. The two sides reviewed the distinguished bilateral relations between them in various fields and hailed the positive resulted achievements following the seventh meeting of the committee as well as the constructive measures taken to enhance cooperation and coordination to serve common and interests of the two countries. The two sides also affirmed their keenness to further develop their relations in all fields, which resulted in signing a number of agreements and memorandums of understanding, including an agreement on the international land transport of passengers' goods between the Bahraini government and Emirati government, an MOU between the Institute of Diplomacy at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Bahrain and the Emirates Diplomatic Academy in the UAE, an MOU for cooperation in the field 
field of social insurance between the social insurance organization in Bahrain and the General Authority for Pensions and Social Insurance in the UAE. Memorandums of Understanding on Cultural Cooperation, of Higher Education, Consumer Protection and Electricity and Water between the Bahraini Government and the Emirati Government, an MOU between the Central Bank of Bahrain and the Abu Dhabi Global Market, an MOU in the field of urban planning and development of urban communities and on tourism cooperation between the Bahraini Government and the Emirati Government. Another memorandum of understanding between the Sheikh Ibrahim bin Mohammed Al Khalifa Center for Culture and Research and the UAE Ministry of Culture and Knowledge Development to celebrate the centennial of Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan and the Muharraq city as the capital of Islamic culture was signed. They reviewed a number of Arab, Islamic, regional, and international affairs of common interest. They also affirmed the firm stance that supports Saudi Arabia in its policies and efforts to confront threats that target the international community, particularly extremism and terrorism. They expressed their total rejection of all attempts to harm the fundamental and leading role of Saudi Arabia in preserving regional and international security and peace. They reiterated the UAE's sovereignty over its three islands, Greater Tumb, Lesser Tumb and Abu Masa calling Iran to respond to the UAE's efforts to resolve the issue either through direct negotiations or by resorting to the Court of International Justice. They affirmed their absolute rejection of Iran's blatant and repeated interference in the internal affairs of Bahrain and other Arab countries and condemned Iran's support of terrorist groups and their funding to threaten security and stability in the region. They stressed the need for Iran to commit the principles and provisions of international law and the UN Charter regarding in the non-interference in the internal affairs of states and respecting their sovereignty and independence, as well as committing to the principles of good neighborly relations, refraining from the use of force and threats which increase the tensions of the region. The UAE side affirmed its support to all measures taken by Bahrain to preserve its stability and security. They also affirmed their commitment to participate in the Arab coalition supporting legitimacy in Yemen and assisting its people in all fields, as well as reaching a political solution with the participation of all Yemeni people, according to the Gulf Initiative and its mechanisms, the outcomes of the National Dialogue and Security Council Resolution 2216. The two sides also stressed that the Arab Peace Initiative is the optimal way to end the Arab-Israeli conflict and achieve the desired peace. In response to the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to develop urgent solutions to ease traffic flow across the kingdom, the Minister of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning, Engineer Assam bin Abdullah Khalaf, stated that the Ministry has completed the expansion project on the right lane from the dry dock to the Sheikh Khalifa bin Salman Causeway in Maharraq Governorate. The Minister also stated the project will contribute to creating smoother and more efficient traffic flow towards Sheikh Khalifa bin Salman Causeway and will release the huge incoming traffic movement from Maharraq Governorate towards the capital. The project will increase the intake capacity of the Dry Dock Avenue to over 22% at the rate of 2,000 vehicles per hour in addition to reducing waiting time at the interchange by 33%. The Minister of Housing, Basim bin Yaqub al Hamar, announced the commencement of the procedures to deliver contracts to 498 beneficiaries of the East Hit Town project for one week, adding that this step comes following the completion of the project's infrastructure and basic services network. The Minister stated that he has directed the Housing Services Department to speed up and facilitate the contract's delivery procedures according to the government approach and the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa on this regard. The Minister noted that the timetable for distributing 5,000 new housing units will be announced soon in implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince during the government forum. 
Prime Minister of Information Affairs Ali bin Mohammed Al Rumehi patronized the opening ceremony of the first international conference on media and challenges faced by the Arabian Gulf, organized by the Gulf University Bahrain in the presence of a number of media leaders and officials of the Ministry of Information Affairs. In his speech at the opening ceremony, the minister hailed the academic and research efforts of the Gulf University, expressing pleasure with the students and guests from the Arab countries. He noted that the world now enjoys the freedom of expression, which is now linked to mechanisms that restrict freedoms. He stressed that such conferences represent an excellent opportunity for Bahrain's experts to meet, to exchange visions and ideas that can be beneficial for the Media March, wishing the conference success. Under the patronage of the President of the Asian Football Confederation, Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, and in the presence of the President of the International Federation of Football Association, Gianni Infantino, the opening ceremony of the new Continental Union headquarters was held today in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Sheikh Salman delivered a speech in which he affirmed that this achievement strengthens the status of the Continental Union noting that there are many set goals to develop the abilities of the member national federations. He expressed appreciation to FIFA for supporting this project and the Malaysian government in contributing to develop Asian football. Sheikh Salman noted that the new headquarters will empower national federations to reach the highest standards of excellence. For his part, the FIFA president affirmed that this project reflects the AFC's professional development led by Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim. The Under Secretary for Agriculture and Marine Resources at the Ministry of Works, Municipal Affairs and Urban Planning, Sheikh Mohammed bin Ahmad Al Khalifa, announced that the three teams have been formed to monitor the fishing violations during the embargo period in coordination with the Coast Guard and the relevant official authorities. He said that the violators will be referred to the competent legal authorities in addition to the control of marine fishing harbors, central markets, and fish shops. He pointed out that the Department of Fisheries will not have hesitate to confiscate any quantities, contrary to the sizes of fish allowed to catch. He explained that the conservation of fish stocks in the Kingdom of Bahrain is a responsibility borne by all fishermen, stressing the need to stop catching small fish. Sheikh Mohammed bin Ahmad Al Khalifa stressed the need to stop infringing practices that are totally incompatible with the trends of sustainable development and preserve the fish resource available in the Kingdom of Bahrain. With November around the corner, the kingdom is buzzing about the upcoming elections and the developmental continuation of the political and democratic practices in Bahrain. For the first time in our modern democratic uh, process here in Bahrain, uh, we have, through the Bahrain Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies, uh, arranged for a national polling uh, to foresee the views of the uh, constituents of Bahrain uh, for the upcoming elections. We are proud. Uh, of our democratic process, but we would want as much as possible to include and involve the constituents of Bahrain and to seek their views and their uh, aspirations and uh, uh, intentions to the upcoming elections uh, in November. I think we have to have representatives in the parliament that reflect the ambitions and reflect, frankly, the age and the sophistication of the Bahraini citizens. And I think we need people who will be engaged with the government, who can act as partners with the government. And so we cannot sit and complain if we don't go out and vote and make sure that we also choose the right people, that we see the options around. And I think it's important because we then encourage others to run for office. Elections are turning points and a very important, the most important appointment in the life of every nation, of every country, in Bahrain, like in Italy, and, uh, you know, taking part, expressing the vote, the, the voice of the people, it's very important to forge, uh, you know, a common uh, identity and to also to have a, a say and the, the politics which are in the policies which are implemented in the country. This is an exciting time. Elections are happening next month and it is an absolute critical opportunity, like you said, not just for youth, but for all Bahrainis to exercise this, you know, civic right, but also duty. We need to reach our voices out there. We need to know 
uh, what's happening in the country. We need to know uh, where our voices are, who's standing up for us, who's giving out our voices, who's talking on behalf of us and uh, giving our demands out there. So it's actually very exciting and I'm really excited for the coming elections. Under the patronage of the capital governor, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdul Rahman Al Khalifa, Al Dana focuses on forums and this, with the support of Sabkin, held today its 10th forum titled Bahrain the Smart Hub and Gateway for Global and GCC Investments and Industries. More in this report. Aldana Focus and Forum, with the support of Tamkin, highlights Bahrain as an investment hub and a gateway to the larger Arabian Gulf region, with wide participation from local and global investors from a number of countries who came all the way to share and discuss investment opportunities. Papers and presentations that are being presented by uh, the different experts are uh, very informative and it highlights the uh, economic indicators and performances globally and how the region will perform in, the, in, this, uh, in the next period and how attractive for the investors to bring in their investment opportunities. The forum provides a great platform for local and international businessmen, as well as a number of government institutions and companies working in various fields, including banking, real estate, technology, IT, blockchain, and much more. I came for the conference of Bahrain, never been here before, but it's really an interesting country, as well as the event. So um, I'm here for getting in touch with a lot of people from Bahrain. We are very interested in partnership and collaborations with the GCC and Bahrain country. It's a beautiful country and that uh, since I come from the Silicon Valley, I would love to understand the technological uh, development in uh, Bahrain and what we can do collaboratively to advance more innovation in the region. Really one of the most exciting events in the Middle East. It has proven to be the place to be for investors to meet innovative new companies and that's why I'm very excited to be here. Hopefully to meet some interesting people who are interested in our project so that we can find some investment to go further with this project. The forum sheds a scope light on business, flexible investment laws in the kingdom and investment opportunities consistent with Bahrain's economic vision 2030, encouraging the expansion of local businesses and the diversification of the economy reinforcing its leading position on the region's investment map. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul